and welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays. We can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun things going on in Linux, open source, and um, I don't know what else do we have this week, Pedro. Uh, well, we have uh, discussions of architectures and uh, little teeny tiny little slice of pie and some actual uh, questions for our feedback. Mm-hmm. How about that? <laughs> that sounds terrifying. But before yeah. we get into that, let's figure out what's going mm-hmm. on in each other's life. Because I know Joel <laughs> is like vibrating with happiness yes. about scale. <laughs> Yes, Jordan is coming to scale. We he got his plane ticket for um, the Monday before next Monday, so I'm real excited because we weren't sure if he was going to be able to make it because of his, you know, needing to get a new job and moving and everything. But he is coming, and oh uh, gosh, I've been just going crazy with lots of scale planning. And we got our stickers that we'll have at the Linux Chicks LA booth and Lutris booths to give out for uh, for Linux Gamecast. And um, I'm going to have some flyers as well. But but they, they turned out pretty good. They're not as nice as the nice ones on Teespring or Die Cut ones. Don't worry, but they're Jill, still pretty our lawyers cool. will be in contact with you about your bootleg <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> That's good. It's going to be fun. It's definitely going to be an exciting but thing. Um, here, here's you, an official oh, yeah. one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Proper mug. You can hold it yes. Up. Hold it up. Yes. There it is. And it's not all screwed yes. up. Good on yes. you, too, yeah. Spring. It's no bad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pedro, what's going on in Britannia? Uh, nothing. It's, it's my first week of vacation, and I've been enjoying it by doing nothing. For the most part. Mm -hmm. I even uh, uh, plugged in the Chromebook to the TV today because SteamOS, well, uh, the SteamOS session that I have set up on the Steambox was giving me hell when trying to watch Netflix. So I just plugged Mm -hmm. the Chromebook in. It's like, yeah, Netflix. We're good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Listen, TV. There are ways around this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have uh, actually had a fun, fun little experience is, what was it, day before yesterday, maybe two days ago. Uh, somebody from the KDN live team got in contact with me. <laughs> They're like, yo, uh, have you, have you used the, uh, uh refractoring branch thing, app image? I'm like, no, you mm. want me to? I'm like, good, good <laughs> you to sure? take a look. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, they, they reached out over Twitter and we did some DMing and I was like, yep, found some bugs. So that was the first time I'd ever, um, submitted a bug report over a Twitter DM. <laughs> wow. But it has been identified and it's going to be fixed. So Yay. That's... also one real quick thing. If you're ordering mm-hmm. stuff on Amazon, we were talking about this before we went live. I had to get a wireless receiver for a wireless controller, but and I didn't want to give Microsoft any money directly, and they were the ones selling it on Amazon. So I was like, I'll get this knockoff wireless receiver. <laughs> didn't know if it was gonna work with Linux. One person in the comments, straight up, like, this works great with my Raspberry Pi Retro Pi setup. Thank you. Thank you, brave <laughs> sir. Yeah, that matter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I tried my best to remember to do this. If you buy something that's like, I don't know if this is going to work, take 10 seconds and do the world I a did favor. that with this mouse. Yeah. There you go. Drop back <laughs> in so the next person can just do a search on Amazon and find out yeah. whether or not they're going to have to ship it back. All right. Yes. Let's get into it with this. No. FUD. FUD. They're not replacing Apple Snap. No, oh, it's not boy. a thing. Jill, what's this? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ubuntu is not replacing uh, Snap with a- apt or, or, or app to get. And I actually saw this uh, and like this on it. Uh, from Popey's tweet on February 23rd. And that's how I found out about this scary rumor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, oh, I actually did watch the Ubuntu, the end of an era, era uh, uh, podcast. And, yeah, that was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. This all started because someone uh, created a blueprint mm-hmm. on Launchpad to uh, suggest, it's like, okay, so how about we replace APT with Snap? And it, the internet as a whole went, <gasps> you want to, it's going to uh, replace uh, <laughs> app with Snap. No, no, they're not. No, no. It, it was just someone who made a post. Come to, on. You know, 
Come on, Pedro, live a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a post. Yes, it's uh, on the launch pad. Yes, it's a blueprint, but it's not official. It was just a community yeah. member proposing that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, they, they definitely would not do this until 1910. I'm kidding. Maybe. Um, mostly. Like you said, I mean, this all started with that blueprint and it just ran out and there was a, somebody on YouTube and was like, well, here's the thing, bugger, bugger. And I'm like, come on. Uh, I think anybody who's definitely spent any quality time with Snap, hi, Poby, uh, kind of laughed knowing that it just simply yes. wasn't possible from a technical standpoint. It was like, no, no, they can. Uh, no. Mm -mm. And, and then he removed Snap from the system because I'm still angry at it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I had it removed for a while. Still have flat packs though. <laughs> you know, I am kind of a. I, I got a lot of love for Snap. I got a lot of love for flat pack. Right now, when I want to try something, I'm like, "Where's the app image?" Yeah. No. Yes. You know, the, the, yeah. the app images are what Agree. <laughs> that just works. App image. Let's get a central repository and some type of versioning for that, and we're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Linus is at it again, man. Oh, oh yes, yeah. he, he sure is. <laughs> so in this article, uh, Linus Torvald says that x86 servers have won and forget about ARM servers. Huh? <laughs> yes. And he states, if you develop on x86, then you're going to want to deploy on x86 because you'll be able to run what you test at home. And by home, I don't mean literally in your home, but in your work environment. And yeah, that that is very, very, tr very true. But in the future, you know, I think ARM processors, you know, will definitely be on the server side. They have the advantage of much lower power requirements, better heat dissipation, and a lower cost server solution. And uh, currently, there aren't as many Linux applications compiled for ARM in our repros, but that could change over time, and it already already has been. We even have a lot more programs available now for the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so that's that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, lower power risk. Five server adoption may soon be in our future as well, especially now now that the risk processing is back in vogue again. <laughs> Remember the days of the deck alpha. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you know, fact of the matter is, and the uh, mm -hmm. Linus's post was on the uh, next platform forums for the what was it, the Neoverse N one and E one, and yes, <laughs> basically he was making the argument that. Um, Cross compiling when uh, a architecture is significant enough is well, it's stupid mm -hmm. uh, because <laughs> if the architecture is already significant, then you should be doing native development. And he goes on a bit of a slight tirade, not a, his <laughs> usual tirades. Uh, yeah. He is, I guess, still very much committed to the whole let's try and be more civilized, I guess. But yeah. To his point, uh, x86 is established. Most developers are running x86 uh, computers at home, where they do most of their development, and they're deploying that development to x86 servers. So that's just a fact. That's just how things are nowadays. The argument uh, of cross-building and testing, as Linus put it, is very weak. I am not entirely sure what he was going for, mm -hmm. but that's not yeah. a good argument, and... Personally, this is someone who has zero experience uh, when it comes to actually deploying something that large scale. But ARM makes sense because, like Jill already mentioned, it's a smaller power package. Yes, the performance is not there, but if you prize reliability over performance, then ARM starts to make a hell of a lot of sense, I think. I don't yeah. know, man. Here's the way I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. You know, admittedly, like right now, nobody does native development on in, in the embedded space. Yet, outside, I know, of compiling a kernel on a Raspberry Pi out of morbid curiosity, because you want to feel like it's 1996 <laughs> again. Uh, but Li Linus, he knows about the upcoming hardware, even at the end. He's like, hey, man, I'm just a little skeptical about this, and rightfully so. Remember, he's like, 
Sometimes these new technologies and things never really boil out, says former Transmeta employee Linus Torvalds. <laughs> he knows yes. a thing or three about this. However, yeah. arms a safe bet mm-hmm. in the server space, I do believe. Hmm? Yeah, and I yeah. guess his argument is also based on the fact that ARM has already found its niche, you know, uh, a single chicken for every coop, I guess. But uh, the ARM uh, arm dominates the mobile market. That's where they found their niche. So mm-hmm. it would make sense to have something dedicated that would that would well, work you can definitely for look, servers. Anybody can look at it like up. this. Arm, you know, when we start seeing the Hercules and the high-powered arm stuff that is going to be coming out, and you know, this time next year, Apple will, I am almost hundred percent sure, have yeah. arm laptops available, their own custom yeah. kit that they've brewed. Risk Five, throwing a bit of a wrench in this. <laughs> yes. They sure so are. is interesting. It's just the cost <laughs> isn't really there to make there. it viable. It's not a product yet. Everyone's yeah. like, but, but yeah, it's got a lot of, it's not anywhere near baked. Come yes. on. <laughs> and right. if you think ARM software support is bad, wait until you fire up a risk device. <laughs> oh, 34 yeah. <laughs> new members have joined the Linux Foundation. Yes, yay! So 34 new members join the Linux Foundation at the Silver and Associate level membership and invest in open source. This is always wonderful news. I have been following the new members joining the Linux Foundation for many years. I've been so happy with the huge increase in memberships the last several years. And yes, new members have been averaging once a day for the last year. That's that is really, really amazing. I, I remember back when there were only five members. <laughs> and uh, one of the new members included is HP Inc. HP's desktop and laptop computer division f- finally joins the ranks. Hmm, I wonder if HP is seeing a future of Linux on the desktop like Dell has. Yeah, yes. I wouldn't put it past them to have a yes. project Sputnik of their own in the works. Maybe not exactly like Dell's, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and also a new member is Chain Code Labs, who supports and develops Bitco- Bitcoin and other peer-to-peer decentralized systems. So yeah, and there's lot loads of uh, of cloud and um, container and um, IT businesses uh, investing in Linux because <laughs> that's the new hotness right now. <laughs> it's good news, it's smart idea, um, good place to be, and <laughs> the more the merrier with this, one hundred percent. So yeah, mm-hmm. and if the awesome. industry as a whole starts moving more towards the so-called open platforms then mm-hmm. maybe you know those very same companies will make their um home and end user facing products more open as a result hopefully yes you hush yes. up hippie microsoft will be ready for the enterprise any day <laughs> yes i'm a communist <laughs> Um, color profile <laughs> support for XFCE. I was oh, like, ah, yeah. Care. I'm like, this is neat. Uh, pretty fancy front end for color D. And uh, current plan is to get this feature merged before the release of 414. Probably no later than like Q3 2037, possibly. And the color profiles just by itself is a handy, handy little thing to do. Now, it's not going to calibrate anything, but once you have that together, the one that sticks out to me is you can have a color profile for things like, oh, I don't know, your webcam. Because, yeah. hey, man, webcams really like to uh, make people the color of a lobster. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, that's actually one of the things that they did. They let you not just set per device uh, color profiles. It will also allow you to set specific uh profiles for each device mm. for a specific use so let's say you have your monitor and mm-hmm. you're playing a game and it's at its default profile and then you open up gimp and it goes oh hello Ding! <laughs> done <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean think about it you can have a profile for your scanner your printers monitors yep. and that's really neat oh uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to fall into the bucket of things I really should use and play with, but I never will. 
I'm not gonna lie. Mm. I mean, this is for oh. those people who you know care <laughs> about color accuracy at you know a 100% RGB three level. Well, here's yeah. my, here, here, I was thinking about <laughs> color calibration. I was like, what do you know? I was like, well, I bought one monitor that was professionally calibrated as a business monitor, and I just made the other ones match it, kinda. Mm-hmm. Aww. That was my strategy. <laughs> well, I've or you go been... to Amazon and you buy the stupid little spider. I thing. have one. This is oh. how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, yeah. Oh, I'm actually really excited about this because I, as an artist, I need better color management and profiles um, and them to be as accurate as possible and that work globally among all devices. So XFCE, way to go. This is this is awesome. And I know GNOME and KDD, KDE have both already integrated ColorD support via GUI in their settings dialog and settings daemons. But I'm just so happy that XFCE has stepped up to the, the plate. It's, it's pretty yep. awesome. <laughs> that is a really, really neat feature. <laughs> and no, no one really knows when, you know, 414's a wizard, man. It'll get here. What it wants to. <laughs> <laughs> SSH. Precisely what he means to. <laughs> SSH, yes. Pedro, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Wouldn't you say one of the first things, probably within like the first hour, is make sure I have SSH set up on any Linux box because uh, I have nothing but absolute faith in myself to hose something that will require oh yeah. me to log into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this box had, uh, when I did the Solus install, that was the first thing I set up before I even bothered with anything, you know, outside of the video drivers. I kind of needed that for the 1080. But oh. yeah, that was uh, priority alpha. Mm -hmm. And it should be your priority alpha to keep that particular SSH session into your box very secure. So Fedora decided, you know what, let's actually tell people how they can secure it with a little bit of two-factor authentication. And, mm -hmm. you know, Android being the dominant platform, let's make, uh, let's make it work off of Google Authenticator. And they go through the whole process, very well explained, actually very easy to follow. Uh, they give you everything you need. Uh, the one thing I would change is don't use VI, use Nano. So just do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> We're trying to tell people to use editors they might be able to close. I'm just saying, you need a text editor, not something that's trying to compete with Emacs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's actually really easy to set up. They do uh, recommend that, or they do say that uh, you want to be using open something on your phone or other. Uh, free OTP, that's the name of it. Mm, yeah. Uh, you can actually set it to use the Google Authenticator app, and it'll. Uh, you can still generate the QR code, and the Google Authenticator uh, app will recognize the QR code. So that's good. So I don't know why they chose free OTP, but eh. that does it give me a little like ASCII QR code? That'd be awesome. <laughs> if it just printed it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess could it's just a picture you could just print it out <laughs> free ideas uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah it's uh they're using google authenticator that right there was like oh they're not using some obscure thing yeah. that someone created at one time and it may or may not I know be it's a google currently. product that way you can be secure <laughs> knowing that they wouldn't possibly kill something people use not google no <laughs> so. uh -huh. yes True that. A Google Authenticator <laughs> would be a tall order. <laughs> you know, it's Google, man. <laughs> that would be a tall order to kill, but it's Google. Yeah, yeah I'll you, give you, you that. You can come up with like these moonshot things and finish the sentence with, but it was Google, so. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> I guess there is an argument to not wanting to give Google any more power after all. <laughs> it's a thing. I mean, yeah. I don't even go as far as to do public private SSH keys because I don't do SSH, you know, um, internet. You know, it's not WAN facing at all. You can yeah. do it inside on the network, but. Yeah. I'm yeah. If, if, if your password. SSH connections are internal, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jill, any thoughts on this? Yeah, the, well, uh, to me, you know, I was actually kind of surprised this hasn't been done sooner. <laughs> this is really awesome. And it makes so much sense, especially since SSH, like we've been talking about, is one of the most used applications on Linux and is used to connect securely to remote systems. So having that, you know, uh, uh, two-factor auth is uh, just 
just wonderful and it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right um, on, right on. Um, how can the planet is coming up next? And because I just, it's so secure, Ven. <laughs> man, I just want to know what what do you really want to use this for? We're talking about the super Eufy yeah. secure boot disc where you can boot any OS or .efi without disabling UEFI secure boot. Uh, key feature. The disc is fully functional with the UV secure boot mode activated. It can launch any operating system with a file, even with untrusted, invalid, or missing signatures. So, you know, not really for hacking or anything like this. What, what I was thinking, Pedro, was like, well, if I mm-hmm. got a lockdown box and a drive and I want to wipe it, maybe? Question mark. Yes. That yes. could work. <laughs> That's the thing. This isn't a complete tool. This is a wrench. It's what you do with the wrench that uh, that that that's what matters. It, you can literally build anything you want around this, uh, and you just use this particular bit to work around the secure boot annoyance, which you should just. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Strider brings but... up in chat. Yes, that's kind yeah. of the point. <laughs> <laughs> The whole point yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is defeating the point of UEFI Strider because <laughs> it's, UEFI can be a bit silly with some things, and especially Secure Boot. It's just Microsoft trying to shoehorn their stuff. They tried. Yes. Into the they tried order. hard. Yeah, yeah, they tried. <laughs> and if for some reason you can't unlock it because the BIOS has a password or something or other, and it's just stuck on, and you still want to load a different operating system or do something to that system that you couldn't because there is no secure boot signature, this will help you get that booted. It's just yeah. a crowbar to just you know squeeze or force the door open just a little bit so you can sneak in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Microsoft, yeah. you know, they've been push had been pushing this so hard <laughs> for yeah. a while. Mm. And, and it was uh, broken. It was broken. Yes, Secure boot was... was broken two weeks in. So yeah. let it go. <laughs> <laughs> well, ah. I think this is great for data recovery, reinstalling your OS, or just being able to boot from a flash drive on a secure boot system. Really yeah. awesome. And um, I'm looking forward to using this because I have a system I could do this with. <laughs> Well, it wouldn't be a complete weekly daily Wednesdays without covering Chrome OS. Ah. <laughs> no, would it? It is Linux. Actually, And yes. now it runs Linux apps, so there's <laughs> double the Linux. <laughs> next, next thing you know, you'll be telling me it makes squeaky noises. Oh, yes. Yes, it does now. Uh, some, some of <laughs> yes. the uh, Chromebooks and Chrome tablets do anyway. Uh, the Chrome... Uh, Chrome OS introduced support for Linux apps in its own little containerized system. And uh, one of the things that a lot of people noticed was that they don't make any sound. Well, <laughs> now they do. And um, the it's currently on uh, the Chrome OS 74. I think it's in the dev channel currently. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the, uh, Jill mm-hmm. actually brought up a good point in the uh, show notes. They only let you do audio output. Mm -hmm. Yeah, audio input is not supported yet due to security reasons of third-party apps having access to the device's microphone or camera, which could violate Google's Chromebook security policies. So, yeah, I I understand why they're being very careful about this. But I'm I'm sure in the future, you know, some of this will be implemented. Mm. (laughs) So it's just really awesome. (laughs) That's the thing, man. I like my Chromebooks like I like my coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Go on. Oh. Quiet. Quiet, Underwater. Yes. <laughs> Under boiling water. <laughs> Big news, everyone. Uh, you, too, can be a star with the OBS latest release, 23.0. It has been in heavy testing for the past month. It is out. There's probably a package, but it's easy enough to compile. Build yourself. It brings a lot of stuff. Uh, multi-track audio for FFmpeg is kind of the big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the NV yes. encode stuff right now, we don't get to play with that unless you were really brave. So I'm just, just pretend you can't play with that right now because you're not going to get that <laughs> out of the box from anybody. <laughs> but what's this vapy stuff, Pedro? What be yeah. this moon technology? It's not some weird vaping stuff, uh, but it is uh, the VA API. So if you have a 
Intel laptop or a AMD laptop and you really want to do some streaming because you want to show people how you did something really quickly or just record it locally, but you're... CPU is already being hammered by whatever you were doing, so you really want to use the GPU to do it, because chances are it's not doing much on your laptop, so VA API now lets you do it. Uh, if you have an Intel laptop, you can use QuickSync, which is actually a pain in the butt to set up in Linux, yeah. Intel. Can we have something <laughs> that's easier, please? <laughs> but yeah, you can use it now. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. yeah, and you know, two weeks ago we actually talked about the OBS Studio Twenty Three release candidate, and um, you know they they've added uh, lots of lots of new audio filters as well, which is awesome. But now this, of course, is the final version mm -hmm. of OBS Studio Twenty Three that everyone can download. It does have some and, uh, compression and limiting yeah. features now built into the plugins. Yeah. Those are expensive yeah. to use, though. Just uh, keep that in mind, kids. If you're going to be using uh, that and you really want something gnawing on your CPU. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they take up lots of bandwidth. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're, the other cool thing is there's new ways now to support OBS development with Open Collective or Patreon. So make mm -hmm. sure to support them. That's awesome. You know, it's one of our... our most used uh, podcasting tools. So, you know, everyone out there, support them. We, we need this they uh, to get an improved. Awesome job. <laughs> they did an awesome job making a usable GUI for uh, FFmpeg. Correct, yeah. That was, mm -hmm. yeah, kudos. <laughs> it yeah. works really well. Um, I've been playing around with it for the last month. Been building it probably every three or four days. Really stable. We're using it right now. Uh, the official, wait, probably not the official knowing me. Uh, I like it. Go try it out. It's not just for, you know, streaming games. We use it to do the shows as well. So good piece of technology. Also, awesome. Vappy looks like junk. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that is one of the, you know, drawbacks of being platform agnostic, contrary to, say, NVENC or NVENC, as the internet has started to call it nowadays. <laughs> Remember what NVEN code used to look like in low re bit rate on like the 700 series? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, why are we talking about cats? Really? <laughs> because it's the internet. We need to pay the cat tax. Yes. So, uh, if you have a laptop and if there was ever a cat in your household at some point, chances are that cat found a nice warm thing that they could yes. sit on that was slightly <laughs> elevated from the table. So, yes, cats will <laughs> sit on your laptop. And if you leave your laptop on overnight, chances are they will press some keys with their teeny tiny little paws. And, um, well... This one doesn't work around the uh, key issue, but it does uh, say if you have a mouse uh, and the cat bumps into it or something happens to the mouse, then the screen won't turn back on and you won't be wasting power. Uh, and it's just a little script that uh, just disables the, uh, the mouse input until a uh, specific keyboard uh, key is met. So... I guess your screens will stay off a bit longer. As someone <laughs> who has always had issues with laptops when they go to sleep and then come back on and things don't work, I can't help but feel like this is actually making the problem worse. Of course. <laughs> and it's not, Aww. you know, very helpful yeah. against the cats themselves. Just <laughs> well, I think this is a great solution to the cat moves mouse problem. But what if your cat hits the enter key on the keyboard, which then reinitializes the mouse? Of this, yes. I am certain where a cat quit is concerned. The and I know you one of quit our hardwiring the enter key to explosives, man. I mean, <laughs> yes. go. with cats, it doesn't matter, even if it's the any key. <laughs> Sorry, not if you use the word explosives. Yeah. So I know one of our patrons and Linux Chicks LA, S. Michelle, who is watching now, could benefit from this on her home and work computers as someone who <laughs> saves cats and does a, a trap neuter release. She has had many accidents of this nature with her laptops at home and work, <laughs> including frying the LCD screen. <laughs> 
one point. <laughs> I got to look at this while neat. Ultimately feel this is treating the symptom and not the cause. Mm -hmm. This boils down to, I, I read the entire article. I was like, all right, th that's a very interesting technical piece to put together. Then I walked over to the <laughs> laptop and closed the lid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the point here is you want the screen to stay off, but the laptop to stay on as well. <laughs> yeah. That's a made up use case. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> we've had a lot. Hey, of, everyone, if you want to support this made up here. use case, you can look at that transition. Now, um, head over to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the support button, uh, become a patron. It'd be awesome. We'd love to hang out with you in Discord. That's where we're at the other six days of the week. Mm -hmm. We've got some Amazon affiliate links. You want to kick us a shackle or two. It doesn't cost you anything, and we get a cut of that action. That is brilliant. <laughs> All of you are awesome doing that. we got a wish zone where you can order us stuff for the studio and get a, give me a little piece of paper that I will be legally required to read out on here. And that sounds like a horrible idea. Don't do it. Humble Bundle. Uh, that's great if you're going to buy something through that. And Magic Internet Monies. I want to thank each and every one of you who are making mm -hmm. this possible. This is a community project, and we've managed to do it for 159 weeks. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Uh, we yeah. do want to thank uh, mm -hmm. somebody who yeah. uh, sent us some MBTC, Magic Internet Monies. A little bit. Ooh. Uh, send me a note with like the date and the amount, and I'll like, hey, this was you. I'll be happy to like shame you publicly. It's like you're responsible for this because we can <laughs> use that with person convert it into gear and stuff we need. It yes. is brilliant. I want to thank all of our patrons. Uh, with that, you do get access to our pre pre super shows, and we just celebrated two years of that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> two years two of us years. just talking crap without you know it actually <laughs> much caring for content yeah <laughs> it started out as a legitimate production meeting and now it's basically movie reviews and uh among other things so yeah there, there's basically anything <laughs> 200 hours of that if you want to go back and listen to that nonsense i did make a thing earlier last week but after wednesday uh if you're curious mm -hmm. about how all this nonsense is like stuck together with like what I'm looking at right now in the software side of it, how Jack is tied in with our door and how we mix everything and push everything out with OBS and all those settings. It's like 45 minutes of me being old and rambling and telling tells while showing you the desktop. It is very intricate, very detailed, and it will put you to sleep. It's like ASMR with old man Vin. <laughs> and I'm going to do another one. It's going to be Aww. brilliant. It's going to be fun and uh, maybe a little bit terrifying. <laughs> yeah, if you like techno spiel with Vin Stone, that's your jam. <laughs> hey. It was it was awesome, Vin. It was so detailed and it, and you when know, I walk that's... into a video, me and I'm like, first minute, I'm like, this is going to be long. And it's going to be boring. <laughs> I deliver. Yes, you did. <laughs> Massivoni, ouch. Uh oh. Aww. Aww. Okay. Not not true, Massivoni. <laughs> ben brought it. Get into a slice of pie. <laughs> yes. Yes. Just do a teeny, yummy, tiny yummy. slice of pie, Jill. Give us. Yes. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation updates its devices to the Linux 4.19 kernel from the Linux 4.14 kernel, which makes patching and development so much easier on the Pi. And as it, as a lot of people know, Linux 4.19 is a long-term support LTS kernel. And as we talked about during its release last October, it improves the performance of the Raspberry Pi ARM and Broadcom device. Devices. So this will just make it so much easier for development and uh, uh, bug patching. Just awesome. Nice. That's yeah. That's, yeah. that's good. Uh, but uh, there were some issues, and the I think the article actually uh, brings it up. Uh, some yeah. people were reporting that uh, some of the Raspberry Pi models were having issues with the Wi-Fi. Oh, the so Wi-Fi. Yeah. Have, yeah. If you have a mm -hmm. three, uh, three plus or a zero W, give it a shot. Let us know how it works. Don't, you know, do it on something mission critical, just on one of your test pies, please. <laughs> mission yeah. critical pies. 
Yeah, and even the the author, me, you know, <laughs> he he mentions to you know he was going to wait till uh, that that issue was fixed <laughs> and things are more stable. <laughs> so this is that's the always problem, a good Pedro, thing. Is I totally believe you've seen some because I have to. It's like that's <laughs> yeah. a bad idea. Holy I've supported. seen a couple of crashed ones as well. It's like, oh, that was supposed to be a movie poster, but I see the Raspberry Pi thing at the top there. Huh. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've seen it at checkout lines on registers. <laughs> so. Fun times. Hey, maybe you do uh, fun, weird, and amazing things with pies. We'd love to hear about it. Tell us yeah. about it. Uh, maybe show them off, send some pictures along with your contact information. But that's a very complex um thing to do pedro it is oh we yes if only there was a difficult. way that you if only there was a way that people could condense all of that into join some our news group alt dot lw patreon.com for slash linux gamecast you know you can find us on uh discord there we'll always uh be hanging around but if you'd like you know something a bit more direct uh, you can always go to the contact form on linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button and you uh, make sure to select LWDW for the show that you'd like to submit that feedback to. And we will be happy to feature your message or your question right here, right now. Unless Seems the answer is on the first page of Google. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's really entertaining. It might still get through. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right. <laughs> so the first one it comes from uh, Jacrombie. And... Hmm. Uh, they say, I am upgrading my desktop from a SSD to a larger NVMe. Is DD the best way to do that? Will this cause problems with UFI slash secure boot? Would it be better to reinstall and copy over the data? Okay. Yes. It it's a bit would... to unpack. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two, the two questions. Would it cause problems with UA... Oh, three questions. Sorry. My bad. Best way to do that. Yes. DD will work since you're copying from a smaller drive to mm -hmm. a bigger one. You'll get both the uh, beginning and the end of the drive, so that will work just fine. Uh, you'll have to expand the uh, the partitions to make use of the rest of the space, but I'm assuming you're aware of that. Uh, Never assume, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I spelled it out anyway. Expand the partitions. I'm just saying. Uh, will this cause problems with UEFI slash secure boot? No. No. Unless you, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how mm -hmm. it would. You already have the system installed. The, the key is still there. The signature is still there. It shouldn't. Yeah. But why do you have secure boot enabled in 2019 if you're running Linux? This, this yeah. that was a definitive <laughs> exactly. maybe, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, it's secure boot. It's Microsoft's crap. It, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, hmm. Wait, what? You don't have, like, signed kernels, Pedro? What are you, a hacker? <laughs> no, I run Solus. <laughs> hacker on a budget. Got it. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't... Hmm. Yeah. Good. With I'm... me, I would probably just uh, use Clonezilla and not you even bother with DD, just like boop, boop, done, done. Yeah. Yeah, clones yeah. also oh, that was That was the one I was going to suggest, but I still DD all the things. That, that's that's just, I've been doing it for years, so <laughs> I just use DD. But Clonezilla is great. One of the things a, I ran into, you know, Jill, was... Live CD. Live USB for that. <laughs> I, even, I ordered a uh, USB to NVMe because I realized, like, wow, I don't have anything to copy an NVMe drive except for this oh. one motherboard in the house. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. Like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that data would be lost to the ages <laughs> if I did. It's like, hmm, all right. So Pedro's like, you can get a USB one. I'm like, fine, I got a USB one. So. That's just in They're case. not terribly expensive, yeah. all things considered. So yeah. my opinion to uh, Jacrombie would be back up everything you need, nuke and pave. Mm -hmm. Back up, back up, back up. I would say just blow everything out with your home directory, but you don't know. <laughs> Could be running canonical product. There is no home Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that still a thing? Uh, coming up next from Hugh. Yeah. So he's uh, um, telling us about AdGuard uh, DNS. LWW got me interested in setting up a pie hole for my home network. I was doing some research today, and I came across a post on Reddit about AdGuard DNS. It is an open-source DNS server 
with the source code available on GitHub. It also claims they do not log or save any user information. This seemed like it may be a good option until I get the Pi hole set up. Have you all used this DNS server before? I would like to know your thoughts on it. Thank you. Thanks, Hugh. Thank you, Hugh. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you. Does he have a PhD? Can we call him Dr. He? Oh, no, and he's not Hugh the Borg. So, so sorry. That's what the first oh, thing that man, came to got, mind. He goes by his collegiate nickname, Lacutus. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so, actually, Hugh, I've never used Adgar DNS, but I know it is highly recommended. It has a great reputation. I use Open DNS, uh, which I love tremendously. I've been using that for a very long time. And DNS Watch is also a good alternative as well. But I've heard good reviews on Adgar DNS, so I, I need to try that one as well. <laughs> what do you use, Pedro? Uh, mm -hmm. One or eight? Or two. <laughs> right now, I'm using one. One. I, yeah. I'm on a mix of one and eight myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have one of the laptops running on eight, but, well, and the Chromebook. But, yeah, I, I right mm -hmm. now I'm using one because low latency. It's, it's actually really, really fast. <laughs> Just remember, man, I mean, Cloudflare and Google did a great thing yeah. with the DNS thing. Because I did. remember having those written down way back when. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like eight 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 one 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 one. We knew it by heart. <laughs> <laughs> nice thing. Uh, thanks you. Uh, it's good to know about stuff like that, man. And yeah. yeah, I actually didn't know about Edgar, and yeah. I had to look through their thing. And one of the things I mm -hmm. saw that they didn't claim at all is like, we're not claiming to be you know super low latency like Cloudflare is, but yeah, we'll block all the ads. So I mm -hmm. guess that's a trade off you can do. And if you don't mind cranking out the wine, actually, uh, you can find, there's a good little tool. Uh, look for, uh, I think it's like Gibson Security Research. They have a little tool written in assembly, but it works on wine. And you can find DNSs you did not know exist. Like, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, there's a level three DNS next door. Yeah. Which <laughs> is even faster than Google or Cloudflare, but I don't use it because I can't remember the IP, but I remember one, 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 one. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> Winning. All right, that's going to do it for the show. We're going to get out of here. Uh, we're going to roll some credits and thank everybody for making this possible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Thank you all Maybe. for joining Aww. us. We shall see you in about seven days. Six days. Three days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? The Microsoft uh, Time Ex. Uh, Estimated time arrival thing. <laughs> you really took the long way around saying progress bar, didn't you? ETA. I couldn't think Aww. of the word progress bar at the time. <laughs> but then, Roxy, oh. Yes. Oh, we got a gang in there. Got All the good people. <laughs> I ran out of. I started you know. to read everybody's name out. Then yeah, I, like, Man, I did. I did that two weeks ago, and. <laughs> <laughs> It was Grazing the, G the Targos. G Freedom Penguin. G -N -C, G -R -C, DNA, that's benchmarked. <laughs> David, special to Michael, Egal, Jolie, Pablo, Tapacol, Caius, Pathé. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't yes. make it up names, man. Good they won't go back and check. <laughs> Yay. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>